guess we got revolving pastors here today. Something like that anyway. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of coming in your house, for the gift of praising your name, confessing our sins, praying together, and being with your people. Let us never take this wonderful gift for granted. Amen. That gospel lesson we just had, had that first phrase. And I think here it said, grow our faith. I, I put it, increase our faith. So let's start there. It's Luke 17, and Jesus' disciples have been with him now through quite a bit of stuff. And uh, yeah, they've been wandering around the land with Jesus. And earlier, Jesus had told them things like, leave everything and follow me. Turn away from your family. Give up all your possessions. Forgive those who sin against uh, you, and so forth. And so, yeah, there have been some good moments in this whole adventure. You know, they've watched miracles and feedings and all kinds of other stuff. But now, I think the disciples are kind of almost frustrated, if you will. They've watched it all, but they don't just, they don't feel quite up to the task, if you will. And so here comes this, that first verse in that gospel lesson. Grow our faith, increase our faith. Well, I think you and I are much in the same situation. We love Jesus. We believe in him. He's our Lord and Savior. But then we look at our lives and, and maybe many times, you know, we say, ah, things just aren't the way they should be. I've kind of failed to be a Christian and, and I'm kind of frustrated. My love is thin. My trust is weak. Uh, I don't have much of a faith. And then we cry out to Jesus, increase our faith. Well, if that's what the disciples said, what do you think they wanted? Well, increase or grow my faith. I mean, do they want a bigger faith? And what does bigger mean? More powerful, deeper? Do they think it's faith is something you can quantify, you know? Lord, give me five more gallons of faith or, or 50 gallons of faith. I don't know. You know, what does that mean? How do, how do you think about that? And then if you got what you wanted, if you had enough faith, could you respond with, oh, I can now serve God completely and I'll, I'll never waver. I think that our request of God and the disciples' requests kind of show that sometimes we're, we're overwhelmed, if you will. You know, we just, we don't quite know what to do. We want to be good Christians, but we're just not quite sure we're up to the task. And, uh, and I think that's understandable. We want to be a disciple, but we say, this is just beyond me. I, I can't do it. Uh, I, I, I don't have enough knowledge of the Bible, or I don't have enough experience in the church or the faith. You know, I'm falling short. But Jesus isn't looking for heroic faith. Uh, in there, he said, you know, you got this mustard seed of faith, and a mustard seed's very small, maybe an eighth of an inch kind of fits between your fingers here. And then, he, then he's got these pictures of, you know, like if you had a mustard seed of faith, you could pull a tree out of the ground, <laughs> or you could move mountains, and you go, wow. That's the kind of thing we're looking at. I don't think Jesus is looking for heroic faith, you know, like that kind of a picture. I think Jesus is looking for everyday faith, just kind of the, the normal part of life. And I think in the normal part of life, faith is doing your job, doing what's right in front of you today because it needs to be done. You know, faith is, can be very ordinary. Faith is mowing the grass because it has to be mowed. Or faith is fixing dinner for your family because they're hungry and you want to gather them around the table together. Uh, 
Faith is changing the baby's diapers. I used to sing to my children as I changed their diapers. I don't know if that's a good formula, but they watched me singing and didn't scream as much. <laughs> Faith is Phil and Ron and all these guys who build handicapped accessible ramps for homes in Ashland County so that, you know, elderly people can get in and out of their houses. That's a, that's a wonderful ministry. Uh, faith is fixing a leaky toilet, pruning the bushes. Faith is praying with your children at meals and praying with them before you go to bed. Faith is then not what we do in churchy situations. I don't think that's faith at all. I think faith is serving God and God's people in the mundane and the routine of our lives. Just think if you and I wrote down all our acts of faith for the past seven days. Let's say I had a whiteboard up here and, you know, I started writing it down. Here, you did this, you did that. And we'd get a big, long list, wouldn't we? Lots of stuff. All right. Now, second part of this is let's imagine in the next seven days you did nothing. Zero. You go, wow, our world would really be poor, wouldn't it? Yeah, our world would be empty. Faith is then like a muscle, if I can put it that way. A muscle, you know, muscles have to be exercised and used. So faith is like that. We have to exercise our faith, and the more we exercise our faith, the stronger our faith muscle gets. Yeah. So we go forth to take care of the needy, protect the vulnerable, reach out to the lonely, and befriend the friendless. And faith is not only a muscle, faith is an adventure. Faith is putting one foot in front of the other and, and going out into life, walking towards the future. Not because we can definitely see what's coming. No, we really can't but we trust that God is fashioning a future for us, that God has something in mind for us. Faith, faith is then imagining the challenges that God has in front of us, and whether, you know, it might be solving a problem where we work, or it might be forgiving someone who has really wronged us. Now, these are actual opportunities, and they invite us to grow as disciples and grow into the presence and goodness uh, of God and God's presence then in the world. Do I know what my future entails? Well, no. I mean, I, like you, I got plans for my future, but God's in control. You know, we make great plans and then God controls it. Uh, do I know what Trinity's future entails. Again, no, I really don't know. But I do know that God walks with all of us. God walks with our congregation. And when we turn completely towards God and we say, your will be done, well, that, then we're in the right spot. Not my will, but your will be done. Just a little word of caution here. Faith is not a work that we do, a work that we do to please God or even to earn the favor of our community. No, faith is not our work, but faith is a gift that God places inside of us. So that allows us to trust in God and build that relationship with God back and forth. Faith is then trusting that God's in charge of our life and that we are not in charge. Faith is trusting that, yeah, we can be nice and helpful, that's true, but only God can move the mountains or uproot the trees, if you will. So in spite of many nice people in this world who do helpful things, we, we have faith in Jesus and not just faith in doing good things. Today we have this image of the mustard seed. I said it's a very small seed, 
only about an eighth of an inch big, but of course it can grow into this big tree. And uh, that's, if you have a bulletin, that was on the cover of it. Uh, this big tree that happens from this small seed. I think we shouldn't discount any of us because you say, I just have a little bit of faith. I don't know much about God. I just have a mustard seed. Really think about babies when they're baptized. The Holy Spirit begins to work faith in them. They have just that mustard seed, but it's going to grow and grow and grow into the maturity of, a, of faith with God's help and, and our support. So yeah, all of us want to grow into a mature faith. And when we have that mature faith, we have a deeper and richer relationship with God. And we know how to handle a lot of stuff that comes from us. But in any case, even if we just have a baby faith, if we could put it that way, we are not lost eternally. No, the Lord has surrounded us and wrapped his arms around us. So either way, we respond to God's richness by pursuing life in his name. If faith seems impossible or confusing to us, it is possible with God. Faith then can move the richest person to share their wealth, and faith can move the poorest person to offer their life as a gift of service. Our mustard seed is then transformed by God, and we gladly accept this role of being God's slave, a slave in God's kingdom where we are obedient to our Lord. So, if you only have a mustard seed, that's okay. We're not measuring quantity of faith today. Yeah, not five gallons or 50 gallons. Because it's God's kingdom and God does the heavy lifting. You and I are just participating, if you will, in serving our Lord. Today, we respond. We respond by serving our Lord, serving him joyfully, trusting his promise to all people. And we say simply, Lord, increase our faith. Amen.